Yeah, I would have already cast my vote for John Fetterman for many reasons. Oprah Winfrey. Maybe you've heard of her. She is the powerful celebrity that made Dr. Oz famous, gave him his television show. Well, she has made an endorsement in the Pennsylvania Senate race between Dr. Oz and John Fetterman. And she has endorsed John Fetterman. So I'm going to play this clip of her endorsement and I'll get to some backstory as well as the reaction to this from both Fetterman and from Oz, which is interesting and uh, more as well. So let me just play this endorsement. This is from a conversation that she had, a, a virtual voting conversation on November 3rd, where she was discussing the importance of voting with community leaders. Here is her endorsement. You mentioned Pennsylvania. I have to see this midterm campaign. Uh, I said it was up to the citizens of Pennsylvania. And of course, but I will tell you all this. If I lived in Pennsylvania, I would have already cast my vote for John Fetterman for many reasons. All right. So I'll get to the reactions from both campaigns in a second here and elaborate on that as well. But first, here is more of what she said. So in terms of the Fetterman endorsement, that was the end of it. But her larger conversation about voting included these comments saying, if we do not show up to vote, if we do not get fired up in this moment, the people who will be in power will begin making decisions for us. Decisions about how we care for our bodies, how we care for our kids, what books your children can read, who gets protected by the police, and who gets targeted. And right now, you have a say in these things, uh, a say in these things we do. So I'm going to elaborate a little more on at least one of the points that she uh, brought up here. But look, this is before I get any, any further into this. The reason why this matters right now is because she knows Dr. Oz very well. She made him famous. She gave him his show. Like, you could argue here that Oprah's endorsement at this point doesn't mean what it meant, say, back in 2008 when she endorsed Barack Obama, because that was a time where she still had her, her daytime TV show. She was still very powerful. People still hung on to every word she said. And I think that endorsement back then did have a big impact, big support uh, that helped uh, Obama support. But this is a unique endorsement here because of her connection to Dr. Oz. Now, it's impossible to know, of course, what kind of impact it's going to have on voters in Pennsylvania, also considering that many people already vote early. But it doesn't hurt, right? <laughs> so, and this, before I even get to anything else, Oz is, the fact that this guy on his TV show sold fake weight loss pills, admitted to doing that later on in front of, in front of Congress because he was caught doing it. And he still is able to run to be a senator, let alone may actually be the senator. This is a guy that used his platform, his trust that people had in him to screw them out of money to make himself rich. How can anybody possibly trust Oz on anything just on that alone? But let me go uh, a little deeper here. So the Fetterman campaign responded saying it is an honor and privilege to have Oprah's support in this race, said Fetterman in a statement. She is a leader on so many issues, fighting for our democracy, passing common sense gun reform, and ensuring racial justice. I'm grateful for Oprah's support and trust on the issues that matter to people across the country and Pennsylvania as we close out this campaign. Also on Twitter, Fetterman, of course, has several posts about this, including this one saying, welcome to Team Fetterman, Oprah. And some backstory here. So Fetterman's orbit knew how powerful a nod from Winfrey would be, and it worked behind the scenes to court her. The Fetterman campaign made a direct appeal to her team for a meeting, according to a person familiar with the outreach. Celebrities and prominent Democrats who support Fetterman also urged Winfrey to back him, the sources said. So it's unclear if that's what had an impact on Winfrey doing this. It's worth mentioning, though, that also in that podcast where she endorsed Fetterman, she also endorsed other Democrats, which, you know, is less surprising here, this is a little more surprising, maybe, given the fact that, of course, Oprah uh, knows Oz very well. Now, here is Oz's reaction. So I'm going to show you what he said a year ago and compare that to what he's saying now. So a year ago, this is back in December uh, of last year, Oz said previously during the GOP primary that he asked Winfrey to not get involved in the race. Quote, I asked her to stay out. Don't support me because if you get involved in any way, you'll get hurt and I don't want my friends hurt. 
he said in December at a private event, according to the New York Post. So, it's impossible to, you know, know what was that, what was actually in Oz's mind if he actually thought that Winfrey supported him and just didn't do it publicly because, or, or he was encouraging her not to do it publicly. Uh, there's many things happening here. Did he actually tell her this? Did he actually... Did, did, was this conversation a thing? Did they sit down and Oz was like, well, I know you support me and you love me. We're good friends. But please, Oprah, don't get involved. Did that conversation actually happen? I'm going to say no. I'm going to call bullshit. Oz is a known con artist, a known fraud. So I don't think this conversation ever happened. But here he is trying to project that Oprah supports me, but she can't do it publicly because I told her not to do it publicly because she would get hurt in some way. I guess she would get attacked by his opponent in this theoretical situation. I, I have no idea. But uh, that's what he said then. Here's what he's saying now. So a spokeswoman for Oz's campaign did not immediately respond to CNBC's request for comment. But in a statement to NBC News, his campaign said, quote, Dr. Oz loves Oprah and respects the fact that they have different politics. He, <laughs> I thought, I thought she supported you. He believes we need more balance and less extremism in Washington. So before, oh, she supports me, but I told her not to get involved. Now, well, we have different politics, so of course she doesn't support me. Jesus Christ. Now, <laughs> this, uh, and this line this line, Oz wants less extremism. The projection here is incredible. Let me get to a, uh, just a couple of a couple of huge examples of the actual extremism going on. This is from uh, Penn. Their uh, uh, their study here: banned in the USA, rising school book bans threaten free expression and students' First Amendment rights. So this must be the left, right? The left is. Burning books, banning these books from schools. Oh, the left is so extreme, so crazy. It turns out it's the right. So Texas has banned more books than any other state. Across the country, more books have been challenged and removed as religious and conservative groups target LGBTQ and race issues. So Pen America report described as dramatic or described a dramatic escalation in school book bans. Book bans have impacted 1,145 unique titles in classrooms and libraries recently. The top three banned titles focus on LGBTQ plus individuals or touch on same-sex relationships. The right wing banning books. This is extreme. Yet Oz trying to claim that Democrats are being extreme. And of course, offers up no examples. It's even gotten to the point now where one GOP candidate wants to ban books about divorce because they'll cause unnecessary anxiety for kids. You want a safe space? Yeah, these are the extremists right here. Also, on the extremist point, so uh, Trump says, this is back in 2016, I'll appoint Supreme Court justices to overturn Roe v. Wade. Hmm. Then, of course, it happened. Trump then took credit for ending Roe v. Wade after his three Supreme Court justice picks vote to void abortion rights. And what is the result of that? Well, here is one example. Ten-year-old in Ohio forced to cross state lines for an abortion. But, oh, this isn't, this isn't what the right wants. No, the, of course a ten-year-old should be allowed to get an abortion. Of course. Well, in fact... National Right to Life, which is a the right-wing group that represents this view, the major group there, they, they are saying that the 10-year-old should have had the baby. Oz, again, trying to claim that the left is being extreme. Here is an update in this race, in the polling. So this has tightened considerably, as you can see, as races generally do when they get down to uh, voting day, but Oz is uh, still down to Fetterman by about 0.5, so every endorsement matters, every vote matters. Make sure, if you are in Pennsylvania, you go out and 
support the man that actually cares about people. On one hand, you have someone who is a known fraud, which again, it, it, it is amazing to me how somebody who is so clearly a fraud, who sold fake weight loss pills, admitted to doing that to make himself money, that he is someone to be trusted with your vote. That guy versus Fetterman, who actually stands up for the working class, for the marginalized, it is clear who you should support. 